You are watching With a Cup of Tea, the High Plains Book Awards edition, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings, Montana. Now here's our show. Well, welcome to This House of Books. We have with us today Shirley Camia, who's a finalist for the High Plains Book Award for Poetry. And she has a, a book with a real straightforward title, Mercy. And she's going to tell us about that in a minute. But first of all, maybe, Shirley, you could tell us a little about yourself. Thanks for having me. And I'm thrilled to be nominated for a High Plains Book Award, being from the prairies in Canada. I mean, it's such an honor to have something recognized by where I came from. So pleasure to speak with you and a real honor for me to be here today. So a little bit about myself. Well, I was a journalist in a previous life before poetry, and that's how it all sort of came about. I used to write hourly news. So if anybody knows anything about writing a five minute newscast, you can actually tell a story in three sentences. So that's 15 seconds on the radio. And so we used to do this. I likened it a little bit to haiku and I was writing as well. So all of a sudden from journalism and writing news copy to poetry, the link was sort of there already. And then one of my colleagues was a published poet, turns out. So we started talking poetry, we started sharing. One thing led to another and all of a sudden he said, you know, I, I think you should start looking to see who could publish your poems. So I didn't think that that was a possibility. I was doing this, of course, because I loved it and more as a hobby. I was a journalist, but I took his advice and four books later, here I am speaking with you about my latest book, Mercy. So that's how it all came about. Well, it's, uh, it's been well received. It's, uh, you know, getting a nomination as a finalist uh, in this contest is uh, quite good, actually. It's very competitive. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, it's excellent for me. I'm so thrilled about this nomination. So, yes, I mean, it's, it's a huge honor for me. Wonderful. So you, you say you're, um, you're joining us from the Eastern time zone, but you say you're from the prairies? I am. I was born and raised in Winnipeg. In Winnipeg? So yes. And so a lot of my writing is influenced by having grown up in the prairies. So this book, Mercy, a lot of it takes place sort of, I'm Filipino Canadian, but a lot of the instances that happen in Mercy, that context is taking place in Winnipeg. So I mean, born and raised there, lots of influences there, and I still consider myself a prairie girl at heart. Well, uh, Winnipeg seems to be uh, quite a poetry town, actually. It's, uh, we, we have a number of people from Winnipeg, so. Quite a few, and I believe there's somebody else nominated in this category from Winnipeg. So yeah, there is at least one yes. yeah, from in, yeah. In poetry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, long winters. So <laughs> you know, you <laughs> tend to yeah, be creative. Interesting, interesting culture too. I think you know. It's a, a mix yeah, I, I absolutely, and I think that um, the community there, from what I have had experience with has been nothing but supportive for me. So very artistically inclined, but also very, very supportive with other people's art and, you know, going out to people's readings and whatnot. And, you know, just, you know, I've, I've made so many friends in Winnipeg, having not lived there for a really long time. In the poetry community there, I, I love that I still have that link to Winnipeg. I love that it's a new link with poetry. and. I do still consider myself a part of that community, even though I physically am no longer in Winnipeg. Wonderful. Well, tell us about the book, Mercy. Mercy is an elegy and it's basically centered around my mother's death. So as most people, you know, a book like this is not something you're anticipating that you're going to be writing, but you know, one of the most inspirational or thought provoking things that happens in your life is, is losing a loved one. So for me, I was stuck creatively. I was writing something else and couldn't write for a really long time. And months and months after my mother's death, 
I had this inspiration for a poem. And so I followed that, out came a poem, and then it happened again and again and again. So this happened for about 50 straight days after a huge drought of writing. And it was essentially the first manuscript to Mercy. So it felt like a gift. It, I was getting these little gifts from my mother after her death. I was stuck, I felt, you know, I was grieving. I was going through all sorts of emotions and processing. And then here was something that I could hold on to that gave me comfort and gave me a little bit of hope. So I was originally going to call it 50 Days of Mercy because that's what happened to me. Just 50 days of what I felt like was my mother, but also 50 days of forgiveness, that whole idea of, of taking comfort. And I think, especially given that with my mother dying and I wasn't able to be there, I felt so much guilt with, I should have been there, all these things that I should have done, but I didn't do. And I think the 50 days was also a reminder of having mercy on myself for those things because it was not something that I anticipated. It was not something that I think she would have wanted me to forever crucify myself for. So that's essentially what mercy is about. It's about my mother's death. It's about mercy for myself. It's about mercy in general and that sort of forgiveness that you give yourself in grief. Well, you've, uh, you're, you're talking about uh, one of the most fundamental universal themes of, uh, in, in literature and living. Um, who would you see as the audience then for this? I mean, initially, I, only myself, really. I was writing to work through this. And I didn't know. It went through five different versions of the manuscript because the first one was so raw and my publisher turned stone press said you know i think you need some time and distance away to get some perspective i think in the long term you want something that isn't quite so raw and quite so close to the event at hand you want something that can stand a little bit longer time and has more perspective on on what has happened which was very sage advice um, and so when that all happened, it was, it was part of my process. And I was very grateful for Sharon Caseberg at Turnstone who put me through that process. Um, but when I let it go, it was very surprising who it came up to me. People from all over, from you know, different age groups, different backgrounds, who all had very intimate experiences with grief. And like you said, it's, it's a very universal experience. So, I was speaking with people I don't think I normally would have spoken to that were reaching out and, you know, sharing very intimate moments of, for example, my sister had died and I was visiting her and I felt so alone. And here was this bird that came out of nowhere and sang and felt like my sister was coming to visit me and sing me a song and give me comfort in that time. So things like that, I just, I felt such a communion with the people that came up to me after readings to share their experiences because you don't often get that when you're just meeting people on the day to day you get very surface level experiences and hi how are you and there's not a lot else that goes on but having shared this book and then having shared the experiences with other people them confiding in me their personal private moments it just felt like I felt a little bit of me giving my mother to other people and them also giving their loved ones to me. It felt like a very generous, supportive moment and community that I was taking on that I never anticipated. So I guess that's my long way of saying who's the audience for it. Anybody who has experienced grief in an intimate way that is able to get through the book, find comfort in it, and maybe these are things that they haven't quite processed themselves and hopefully that gives them something that they're able to, you know, think about, mm -hmm. seek solace with, and hopefully at the end of it, you know, we can have this dialogue, this discussion. So that's basically who my audience is. I hope. <laughs> Great. 
really sounds fantastic. I think that sounds just right. I spoke with, uh, I met Tammy Haland oh, yeah. last year. Mm -hmm. I was at the Virginia, the Bridgewater International Poetry Festival yeah. and had the great pleasure of meeting. She's a phenomenal poet and a lovely, yeah. lovely woman. She is. Yes. And she's actually the person who said, you know, you should probably submit your book to the High Plains Book Awards. Hmm. And I said, oh, well, I don't know anything about it. What do you? And she said, well, you know, this is what happens. You're part of the prairies. You're part of our region. Why not? So that's, I took that to my publisher and they said, yes, of course, we're very well informed about that. That's one of our big, big you know, competitions that we enter. So it all is because really of, of somebody from Billings. So Billings' own Tammy Haland is, <laughs> is yeah, who another person I should be very thankful for, for, for speaking with you and being nominated for this award. Well, she is pretty terrific. You know, uh, you know, that's poet, poet laureate of Montana. And, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fabulous, really. Been, been mm -hmm. great to work with for, for me. Uh, so. Oh, excellent. And if you do see her, please extend a hello and warm wishes. It's been a long time since we've touched base. But I did tell her, I said, you know, because of you, guess what, Tammy? So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I really appreciate you joining us today and taking a little time with us. Um, I, uh, it's Thank you so much really again. Was, to meet you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank so, you. It's lovely to meet you as well. Yeah. And thank you again, and fingers crossed, but, you know, I um, congratulate everybody in the poetry category. As you said, it's very competitive, so I'm very honored just to be recognized. Well, wonderful. So long, then. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bye. This program has been produced by This House of Books in collaboration with the High Plains Book Awards. The Book Awards were established to recognize regional authors and literary work that examines life on the High Plains. Nominations will be accepted starting in January 2021 on the website highplainsbookawards.org.